Pastor Mark. Now I'm sitting in the back seat. I was in the front seat. What was that one line I, 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 where you were going to barrel down the road? <laughs> Full speed ahead. And so, uh, uh, you know what? As I'm listening to that song, because talking about uh, letting Jesus be the one that's leading, not taking, not thinking you could give Jesus a shortcut. I, lo I mean, I love the lines to the song. Don't want to give G he can't give Jesus a shortcut and it just don't work out. Okay, now he's in the back seat instead of the front seat. And you know what? Can I, and I'm going to say this. I'm going to intro uh, today as you as you have your uh, Bibles, uh, turn to Acts chapter 27. And as I'm listening to his song, I'm like, that's exactly it. It's not like he. Um, have you ever seen some of those those car uh, chase scenes and and someone's in the passenger seat and they really don't want to be there? Acts chapter 27. Um, they don't really want to be in that car, so they open the door and they roll out. They leave. They they bail out of that car. And so as I'm listening, I'm like he doesn't bail out of the car. He just goes from the front seat to the back seat and lets Jesus be the guide. Uh, as he's going down life's road. And so as I'm listening to that song, I'm like, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Because, it, you know, I'm going to say Acts chapter 20, 27, it's not a car, it's a ship. And it's not that they're bailing, barreling down the waves of the road or whatever, how you want to call it. They are, and they're not jumping ship. Or they're told not to jump ship. And we're going to get into that in these uh, few moments that we have this morning. Paul is on his way to see Caesar. And if you, if you, um, one thing that I, I'll recommend um, always is, as I'm about to talk about chapter 27 in Acts, you need to go back to chapter 25 and 24, I think it is, and 26, to because it's a long played out story of Paul and Paul, he's he's getting. Uh, <clears throat> Paul is sharing Jesus with everyone, not just the Jews, but also with the Gentiles. He is sharing with everyone, and as he's sharing with everyone, can you believe this? People don't like people talking about Jesus. So they, they have him, they start uh, a, a, a riotous thought process to get him in chains. And in that process, he pleads, I need to speak to Caesar. Why is that? Because I am a Roman citizen. And so as he is um, speaking and saying, I'm going to go see Caesar, I need to see Caesar, I need to be in Caesar's presence, then all of a sudden, the whole ball game changes. And so now he is on these, uh, his way in chains to get to Caesar. But this is what I love about Paul. It's not just getting to Caesar because he's telling everyone along the way. He doesn't just go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait till I get to the end point. I'm gonna wait, I pleaded to see Caesar as my behalf, so I'm gonna wait till I get to him. It's not like that. He begins to tell everyone along the way that he is um, the gospel of Jesus. What has happened in his life? And as you read those other chapters, that is what it is. This is what happened to me. This is what happened as I met God. This is what happened to me as my eyes were blinded. This is what happened to me as my eyes came open with like scales falling from. This is, and it just goes on and on, spreading how he came to know Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. One of the persons that he's talking to is Festus. I believe that's in chapter 25, 26. And he's letting them know um, with Festus, he's like, hey, you know what? Everyone's hearing this argument and argument and argument. And um, it comes to a point where Festus gathers with uh, 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 governors. And uh, as he gathers, I believe, with governors in, in 26, they come to this conclusion after hearing everything Hearing the crowd that's accusing and hearing Paul himself and then hearing others 
that surround the whole situation. See, what we do is we have just uh, lines of, uh, of text, but you have to have an understanding that there had to be something that was absolutely said because they came to this point. You know what? This man, Paul, in everything that he does and says, proves he is an innocent man. And get this, but because he appealed to see Caesar, that's what's got to take place. He's got to move on from us and go to his end point of, of what he's trying to get to. And that is being in the presence of Caesar. But even in getting into the presence of Caesar, oh, see, I jumped the gun on what, see, I, 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 I barreled the head. Because <laughs> it's actually in chapters 26. He did see Festus in chapter 25. Festus sent him along. The next person that he came in contact was in chapter 26, and it was King Agrippa. And with King Agrippa, he goes through a lot of the conversations. I'm at, if you would, because you're at chapter 27, go back one chapter to chapter 26. Chapter 26 of Acts, starting at verse 19, it says this. And so King Agrippa, so he says to King Agrippa, King Agrippa, I obeyed that vision from heaven. I preached first to those in Damascus, then in Jerusalem, and throughout all Judea, and also to the Gentiles, that all must repent of their sins and turn to God. And prove they have changed by the good things they do. I'm going to pause as I go through this. This is how Paul is, is talking to individuals. It's not about, ready, woo-hoo, we had our doors open and we got to come in and we got to sit on some comfortable wood pews with comfortable cushions and woo-hoo, uh, Jesus saved me. No, Paul reminds them it is not just about saying, woo-hoo, I got saved. It is proving, prove that they have changed by the good things they do. So what Paul is saying, when you come to know God, as your God, when you come to know Jesus as your Savior, when you have the filling of the Holy Spirit, which is the gift that is given to you immediately. So as you're sitting there going, I wonder what gift the Spirit's given. The gift is given. Go into Scripture. You have been given the Holy Spirit, and by all of that, your life is changed. And how is it changed? Everyone sees the proof in the pudding. They see the proof that your heart has changed. Your heart has changed. When your heart changes, everything around you changes. So that I don't forget it, let me say this. We're living in a time right now, and, and it is a repetitive time, and I hate that. Where, where uh, racism rears its ugly head. Let me go deeper where hatred rears its ugly head. Let me go deeper. We're a people with a heart that is not connected to God rears its ugly head. See, people are like this. How are we, you know, and, and I am, don't get me wrong, I am for peaceful protesting. I am. God bless America. That's what you have where you can do that. And, and you go ahead and peacefully protest. Guess what? I have seen it done. Uh, Christian Boomer, he is, he's a man now, right? Yeah, I, I joke. He had his 21st birthday um, on uh, June, June 3rd. He shares it with my dad. So the two of them, it's been an ongoing thing where they share a birthday. So for his birthday, um, we have discovered that the, the best pizza in the land has made it to the West. You'll all disagree. That's all right. Geno's East, it's on Michigan, near Michigan Avenue in Chicago, and we have gone there year after year after year, has made it to LA, up at uh, Sherman, Sherman Oaks, okay? And so I drove up there to Van Nuys and Sepulveda, and all four corners had protesters, peaceful protesters. In my heart, I feel, I'm telling you, I filled with joy because people are getting their message out and you can see it. You're not seeing the violence. You're not seeing the thieves. 
you're not seeing those other bad things. You're seeing a message come out. And then you heard horns honking that were, that were in, in, in your heart. Just those, these people are in support of what has taken place with this four corners. They did not block traffic. They, but I'll tell you what, they were heard and seen. And if you slow down and look, you will see how there is a working of that right there. Unfortunately, it has been, it's a repetitive thing. You know what? If we go back to, to what, uh, 60, probably was 64. I know it was right before I was born. Uh, Kennedy was 68, I believe. Where, where racism was being protested. And, and, and it, was, it was evil things done back then. And then, you know what? Years pass, and more, more evil hearts do bad things. And protesting comes. And then, then another, because in my head it's like this. Um, we talk about, um, I, I, you know what? If you want to know Martin Luther King's uh, uh, Junior's heart. Listen to his sermons. Not just what he stood on on steps for a moment, not just what he did walking down a street for a moment. You have got to hear the man's heart to know what true peace is. And sadly, those times have passed. And, and, and let's go here. Because one of the conversations was L.A., L.A., 1993, 92, thank you, Rodney King, where the, the nation, the world, knew about that. And you had bad stuff that happened then, but yet you still had good people with good hearts trying to get the message out. This must change. And then we had, actually, to tell the truth, with, with Google, you'll see that there's a lot more hatred in the world today. And not, and, and sadly, it's, it's uh, compartmentalized to one name. Because you know what happens? It's one name. Nah, Rodney King. It was one name with um, oh, uh, uh, Florida. It was one name with St. Louis. It was one name with Minnesota. And may I say this? One name is great because it does bring you to your attention. But this is what it truly does to me. It reminds us that someone needs to come and tell us that we must repent of our sins and turn to God and prove we have changed in our heart by the things that we do that follow us. You know what? If you want racism to change and, excuse me, racism to stop, because racism is brought on by hate. If you want hate to stop, you begin telling your friends about peace, about love, about joy, about kindness, about patience, about long suffering, about meekness, and I, I, I'm, I'm using all the words they blend together, about self-control, about love, about joy. And you don't just go to your friends and go like this, you know what, Galatians chapter five says this, because they're going to look at you and say, well, that's funny, because your heart, which runs your body, does not say this. And that's why we still have what we have today. You start to tell others, and you know what? Here's, because I told you about compartmentalizing one name. God is bigger than one name. God is for an entire planet to remove its hatred. And, are you ready? And my God can do it. And he will do it through me because I have been changed and what follows me is changed too. Oh yeah, I Brent, make mistakes and stumble and fall down and God picks me back up. Why? Because there's forgiveness. I, I, that was, I just went off with that, okay? I just want you to know, 
You know, I'm all, I am all for change. I'm actually, change is the wrong word. I'm for the elimination of racism, the elimination of hatred, the elimination of those things that follow with that kind of a heart. And my God will do it. And I will be a, a vessel, a servant, that will help try to bring about changed hearts with my kids, with my grandkids, with my friends, with my congregation. Uh, and I say, because you're ready, uh, please don't be shocked. There's hatred and racism and, 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 e and just evil, e ugly hearts that walk through the doors of church. And God is bigger than all of that. Actually, I, would, I, I love when they walk into church because they will hear, repent of your sins and turn to God. <laughs> Have a changed heart that everyone sees that you are changed. Okay. <laughs> Let me go on. Please bear with me. You know, I, I just, that was, it has to be said and done, not just said. Things that follow. Are you ready what follows? When your heart is changed, you know what follows? Here's what follows. I'm still in chapter 26 for a moment. So some Jews arrested me, Paul, in the temple while I was preaching this. And they even tried to kill me. I highlight and I make stuff bold. And here's one of my highlights. Are you ready? Verse 22 in chapter 26, it says this. But God has protected me right up to this present time. So what? So I can testify to everyone from the least to the greatest. Paul's mission was to tell everyone your heart can be changed. You can follow God and the things that follow you will be changed too. And I will continue no matter what, even though I'm, I'm, I'm about to be um, uh, uh, arrested, even though I've been arrested, even though I'm in chains, even though I'm, I have people that really want to kill me, and even in all of that, I will still testify. Let me ask this, has your heart been a testimony this morning or this past week? Or do you have a plan in the week ahead for your heart to be a testimony? And then he goes on. I teach nothing except what the prophets and Moses said would happen. That the Messiah would suffer and be the first to rise from the dead. And in this way, announce God's life to Jews and Gentiles alike. Then I'm jumping down to verse 30 in chapter 26. It says this. Then the king, the governor... Bernice and all the others stood and left and they went out and they talked it over and agreed this man hasn't done anything to deserve death or imprisonment. Remember how I said I jumped the gun? That's where it's at. King Agrippa and those that were with him after the conversation with Paul, this man, he, there's nothing on him. But because of this, he does need to go on to Rome. Now turn your pages over to chapter 27 in Acts. In Acts, it, it talks about Paul, and he's about to go to Italy. And so now he's getting in this boat. And I love the writer of Acts um, because he's very, um, or the, the writer is very, um, a lot of things there to let you know what's happening. You know the name of the captain of the ship that he's getting on. You know the others that are there to lead on that ship. And Julius is one of them. And Julius, in chapter 27, he comes up to Paul. And as he comes with Paul in this conversation with Paul, guess what? There must be something about Paul's changed heart that impresses upon the captain Julius on the ship. Because as they're trying to get to Caesar uh, to head to Rome, they have to make all these stops along the way, kind of like on a cruise ship, right? No, only it ain't a cruise ship for the prisoners. And so uh, they have these prisoners on this ship, and they're making stops along the way. And at one of the stops, Julius, the captain of the ship, was so impressed about this man, Paul, he let him leave the ship, go off onto land, and visit with his friends. And what his friends did, ready? They met every need that Paul had in that time frame. 
And I don't know what those needs are. Can you imagine being on a ship and being tied up maybe and having ropes or something that are just rubbing up against you? And if you, anybody ever have a rope burn? Rope burns are not fun. They're like a rug burn. If you ever had a rug burn, those aren't fun. They burn. If you've ever played baseball and slid into second and slid in such a bad way, the way the coach never tells you, and you get what everyone calls the strawberry or the raspberry. No, a raspberry is something else. It's a strawberry, I believe. I don't even remember. All I know is this. It could be that long on your leg, and it's red, and it's red for a long time with blood, and, and maybe some gravel, uh, that sandy gravel from sliding in, because it's that rough, and it hurts. And so maybe when Paul got off the ship, they tended to his physical needs as he was going port to port. You know what? Good friends in the family of God. I'm just going to say it that way. So then here we have where he's uh, still traveling along um, uh, port to port. And what takes place, though, is Paul, Paul's, he, you know, here's the thing. When you are a man of God in conversation with God, God gives you all kinds of, the, of thoughts, of words, of things upon your heart to share with others. Okay? And so Paul tells this entire boat, prisoners and all, you know, we shouldn't leave. The, you know what? It's going to be really bad out there. And when we leave, the ship's going to go down. All the cargo's going to be lost. And very possibly, everyone will die. It could happen if we leave. We really shouldn't leave. You should stay in port. And can I say this? What happens is there are people who don't follow God. And by not following God, they follow themselves. It, you know what? I'm a great sailor. I can sail any sea that comes my way. I've done this port to port to port for a long time. This has been my routine day after day. This is who I am day after day. I can do this. It is all about me. And I could do it. Paul's like, you know what? Here, I'm giving you this warning because God gave me the warning that this could happen. This will happen. I follow God. And so Paul begins to keep telling them, all about this. And guess what? Well, there's going to be one of two sides. Either the captain and all those crew are so right. See, see, here's what it is. It's fall. Winter's coming. And unlike L.A., when winter comes to where they were at, they were going to get iced in. It was going to be bad, especially the port that they were in. That winter stuff was going to come right in. It'd be like bam, 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 bam. And so we would be better off going out than staying in this port. Winter is not good here. Hey, you know what? There's a place down the way. If we could just get there and get into that harbor, that's a good place to stay for winter. Let's do that. So they take off sailing. And it comes down to two things. How good their thought process was and God. And guess who won? God. Because then big old waves came up and they beat on that boat. And just as Paul had warned Everything was happening. Now, Paul could have done a couple of things. He could have jumped ship. He could have been in the driver's seat. <laughs> but instead, Paul was in the back seat. Paul was in the one that was taking the guidance from God. And in taking the guidance from God, this is the beauty of people that follow God. It is not just about themselves. They look out for others. Look out for others. And so Paul looked out for everyone on that ship. Ready? He looked out for prisoners that he did not even know until he got on that ship. He looked out for um, uh, the crew, even though they didn't want to follow God. He looked out for Julius, who he probably had a good little heart for Julius. Julius, let me get off the ship and get, get uh, taken care of. So I definitely want to take care of Julius. Some of us pick and choose who we want to take care of. Paul took care of the whole ship as God took care of him. I mean, Acts chapter 27, and I'm going to jump down. See, they're in a part where they're struggling. Verse 8, they're struggling. All the stuff is coming up on them. It is so dangerous. And then they go into... Uh, 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 verse 10 and down to uh, verse 8, I excuse me, 6, uh, uh, 12, 
all that goes into a place of uh, excuse me that talks about how they wanted to stay in port how they did not want to go out they go out and the waves come up on them now they're great sailors okay great sailors in such of this when an emergency comes they kind of know what to do and, and I don't know exactly how they do it I don't know if they got prisoners to do it or how they did it but they tied ropes around the boat around the boat meaning we're gonna break up if we tie the ropes around the we dive under the boat into the water come back up and tie the ropes we'll try and keep this boat together give it some strength so we can do what we want to do and in the end in chapter 27 ropes weren't gonna help man's not walking with God in every thought process they had as well as what they thought they were going to do was not going to work it was not going to save them in fact um, what takes place then is Paul steps up and begins to lead this is really weird the captain doesn't give the orders the major or whoever's next in line does not give the orders Paul steps up and for me, I can only take it this way. A man with God's heart and God's understanding and God's Holy Spirit at work in him says words like this. Hey, guys, you have not eaten for a long time. As a crew, get up and eat. Paul, I like Paul. At least in the writings here. You ready? Ready? Paul, what Paul does is one thing that Paul does is he kind of gives them a little bit of a, of a maybe sit with her. That would be good. And then just let me know how things are going. And uh, Paul, you know, Paul, he's almost sarcastic in his, in his speaking to the crew. And in speaking to the crew, down at verse 21, 22, it says this. You would have avoided all this damage and loss. It's like, you know, I told you what to do. I told you how God had given me this guidance. If you had just done it, we wouldn't be in the, the pickle that we're in. Then Paul, even with that, because some of us would lose heart. Man! Here we are about to sink this ship, lose everything, and this man's telling us we could have avoided it. Paul comes with his next words. Be of good courage. Be of good courage. And then Paul gets even greater, because this is what he says. Not one of you will lose your life. Remember before they went on the cruise? Oh, people are going to die. This time he comes and says, God's greater. Not only is God greater, but no one will lose their life. For last night, an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me and said, don't be afraid. Paul uh, said, don't be afraid. Paul, for you will surely stand trial before Caesar. What's more, God in his goodness has granted safety to everyone sailing with you. So take courage, for I believe God. I, that, I tell you, I highlight, right? That is one of my highlights. There's a lot of take courage here, take courage here. But here it was not just take courage. Why? Because I believe God. How has your week been in the past? Have you been able to go up to someone and, and really emphasize in either your deeds or your words? I believe God. In your week that comes ahead, you're going to have things that are come up against you. Some things are going to be absolutely great. This right here, a gathering together, is great. There's going to be things that are going to take place within the week that, that are, are going to come up against you. And here's what I do know. In all those things, if God is with you, things will change. Why? 
because I believe God and I will tell everyone. You know what? You, uh, I could tell you story after story. I will not. I could tell you story after story. And some of you go, why would you pray for that? You know why I prayed for that and that and that and that? And you might find just off the wall why I pray for it. Because I believe God in everything that I pray for. I'll tell you what. Let's take these past 12, 13 weeks in my prayer life, which has been, it has just like really boomed. <laughs> I, see, I, I, I said stupid virus. The virus in all of this situation has opened up my heart and my eyes to a, a whole lot more things. And you know what? I'm not ashamed to say that my prayer life has, I had, a, I, I believe, I don't know what get, I believe I had a great prayer life. But then I found out, man, it could be greater. So I prayed and prayed and prayed. And in some of those situations, I had to wait, 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 wait. But I'll tell you what. When all of a sudden you go, that prayer God answered. Wow. I believe God. It will be just as he said. So what takes place? Let me, let me quickly come to a, a close. What takes place is... They still go about their own way. They're checking the water levels. Well, you know what? We're going to have a shipwreck. So we ate. We got our... Uh, uh, actually, what it was is they started throwing things overboard. But if we make this ship really light, I don't care about the cargo. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. We'll do everything to save the ship. At one point in time, they... Oh, excuse me. Then they uh, gave an opportunity to... Uh, I might be jumping the gun just a little bit here. Remember, they had already eaten. Excuse me. They're checking the, the, the levels. And one last time, Paul says, okay, you know, everything's getting thrown over. Everybody eat, 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 eat. Why? It's not just because you're hungry. Because you are going to have to make a swim for sure. Remember this. I already told you not one of you will die. How, this is, in my head, it's a cool thought process. I'm already told his God's going to take me to shore. And now this man of God tells me to eat so I'll have the strength to make it to shore. And he knows something. So they eat. All the stuff is thrown overboard. Now they're about to jump ship. Not to jump ship and leave everything, but just to jump ship and get to shore. And in that, there's even a, another opportunity where the, the guards... We need to kill all these prisoners. And they ain't one of them getting away. And remember how Julius was acting toward Paul at the beginning of that little section of the cruise? Cruise. <laughs> of the ship riding on the sea. Julius said, we're not going to kill anyone. And guess what happened? Not one of them left. They just made it to shore. Not one of them died. They made it to shore. Some of them couldn't swim, so they held on to the debris and made it to shore. And at the end of verse 44 in chapter 27, it says, The others held on to planks or debris from the broken ship, so everyone escaped safely to the shore. That's my God. When you follow him, you will see things that will take place. I'm going to close with this. Um, two things. You know, every once in a while, you know, for a while there, I was really writing some things, you know, posting some things on our church uh, website and on our church uh, Facebook page. Both those, Culver City Church of God .org, that's our website. Uh, uh, the Facebook page is, if you click on Facebook and you look up Culver City Church of God Ministries, that'll take you right to our page. As you're walking out the door this morning, if you look at the picture straight in front of you walking out the door, that is the picture of our Facebook uh, page, little emblem. So you go, yep, that's the one I want to click on. I did a lot of writing. And um, this past week, um, I do BibleGateway.com. I'm a very good, I'm a fan of BibleGateway.com because I can see scriptures very quickly. I can have a thought process of, man, I know this story and I can write that story in and they take me to where the story is very fast. Um, I'm slow and this is faster. And uh, when you click on it, it gives you a daily Bible verse. That is so cool. Why? Because you should be in God's word daily. So this past week, 
there was a Bible verse that shot up. And as I was preparing for this message of, of not jumping ship, but staying with God, having a changed heart, seeing what things change because of my heart, I, this is the verse that popped up. Ephesians chapter 3, starting with verse 17 to 19. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Remember how Paul was talking? Paul was saying, repent of your sins, turn to God. Here in Ephesians, then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand as all God's people should. Sometimes we're in a place where we don't understand. You know, when I told you about the things I pray about, that's one of them. I always want to understand God and his plan in my life in his, as his people should. How wide, how long, how high, how deep is his love. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Um, on our Facebook page, I, I, I actually put that scripture up with um, just some words of thought. You know, for us personally, and Pastor Mark, the song you sang about getting in the backseat, and, and I, I, I love it because my whole thought process today was, you know, we all have our own desires we have our own plans sometimes, and we, we think we, we know how it should be when really God knows how it should be, and we should be following him. And the only way to do it is to have that foundation in God. In your life, your life planted on him, and that's how you can stay strong no matter what comes up against you. And how you can then present to others who God really is living in your life. Uh, one of the things that went along with that was a, I, I'm a huge Petra fan. Um, they no longer are singing together after many, 30-some years. Um, but they had a song and it says, um, it was, uh, when will the world see we need Jesus? And, and in that, it was not that the world just needs to see when will they do it. The song went on with how you are as a person is when the world will see Jesus. When Jesus is in you, the world will see Jesus. And there's, you know, an easy thing to say, Pastor Mark, come on forward. Um, easy thing to say. A hard, tumultuous life to live. Not because of God, but because of the circumstances and the situations that surround us. And like that boat about ready to crash on the rocks, God is still there for you. Your heart, your heart changed. You know what? Wow. Look behind you and see what the waves are doing when your heart is changed. Not so that you can take glory in it, but so that you can give glory to God who is living in you. Let us stand as we get ready to sing this last song. Uh, send the light, the blessed gospel light. As a reminder, um, go ahead as you're leaving, if you have not already and you would like to give uh, uh, a donation to the church and its ministries, the, the uh, uh, offering plates are at the back. Um, we always appreciate your donation, and as I said, as it goes to ministry. Um, we're going to sing. And then I'm going to pray so that we can, and we're, you know, just, as always, honor the six feet, and I'll put my mask back on. Honor the six feet as we uh, uh, leave the building. Uh, if you want, grab a bottle of water. I bought more. Don't worry about it. If you want a bottle of water, go ahead and grab it on the way out. Um, be blessed. We'll sing and then pray, okay?